Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who does me and peace out to the rest of you? Black Heart of Sun, I'm black and again asking you to hit that uh, share button first. Um, because that benefits us, whereas the like and the subscribe button tend to benefit just me. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and get straight to it. This is part two of why you're really upset about uh, T.I. checking his daughter's hymen. First thing I'm going to go ahead and address uh, after giving a shout out to the subscribers. Appreciate you all. 48 in a day, it seems like. Or 48 in about a week. New ones. Um, and uh, I also want to give a, a specific shout out um, for a specific reason to uh, Chizitetum Uaga. If I mispronounce it, forgive me, I'm basing it on the spelling. Um, but there's a specific reason he knows what it is. Now, to get to the issue here, I got to say that uh, the double standard is not something I, I'm allowed to uphold. As a Muslim, we're not allowed to even sit up here and entertain the notion that God just walked around here and created mistakes and then just turned people loose and then said, if you fix them, I'm going to throw you in hell forever and ever and ever, just burn you for eternity because you fixed a mistake. I insisted on making and never correcting. You can't sit up here and ask people to believe that God's an oppressor. God, we tend to f uh, forget that God, um, God ain't no cracker, but he ain't no nigga either. God is God. He's divine. He did not create women with no libido. And if you think about it, he warns men and women against materialism. In the, excuse me. In the Quran, he warns us, the warns us against materialism. He doesn't warn them against liking each other. He warns them against being uh, lecherous, which means just fornicating. He does not warn them against marriage. He does not warn women against going sexually wild with their husbands. He doesn't do that. He actually tells the spouses, enjoy of each other what you like with a few exemptions. You know, that backdoor action is not allowed for us. Threesomes ain't allowed for us. Things that cause injury. But other than that, he's like, look, enjoy of each other from what you will, talking to husbands and wives. Now, what this says, when you read the Quran and you read the rules for the women, you realize that God has prioritized the libido of the male and the female over the materialism of either one. I said this in a video before, and the reason I said it was because I got it out of the Quran's translation into English. That's why. It is better for a woman to get married for sex than it is for her to get married for money in our religion. No joke. Women, and now, you can't marry for only either one of those things. Neither one is sufficient. But if you're going to marry for one of them, you better are off marrying for sex. Because if a woman marries for sex and it doesn't work out and she divorces, she didn't commit fornication. If she marries for money and he ain't got it or God takes it away and she keeps pressuring him about that money, she sinned for that. It's not fornication, but it's another sin. And that's not um, being, that's holding a man to the standards of a God and blaming a man for what God has decreed. And God is going to decree things that people hate along with the things that we love as a test. We get tested with both. So when people want me to uphold the double standard, I can't do it. What I can say is this, though, and this is why I get on women more than men a lot of times. Ladies, nobody owes you a whole phase. You can always have a whole phase, but you're not owed a whole phase. If you have one, you are going to deal with its consequences. And many of you already are. End of story. I understand when my daughters get older, they will be able to find a penis easily. My son will not be able to just go out and find a vagina. Like, unlike what many people say, that's not the case. Now, is it easier than it was generations ago? Yeah, but he ain't going to be able to. Now, I told both of them, you can get busy when you get married. And if you want to get married when you're relatively young adults, I'll help with that. You don't have to wait till you're 30, like what, unlike what other parents will do. However, fornication's out. And I, told, I said this to both of them. Neither one of them has an issue with this. When parents tell their daughters, don't you do this, and they tell their sons, you get out there and you do as much as you can, both of them wind up having an issue with this. And what's the reason? 
most fathers don't tell their daughters nothing about it. Most fathers tell their daughters specifically what to do regarding sex, and that is to not engage in it. So these sons are out there gallivanting around town, hanging out, trying to find women to, you know, to, to, to get some from, and these women are in at certain hours. And why are they in? Because their fathers told them to be. And sometimes when they ain't the father, it still may be the pastor or the uncle or the granddad or just older brothers. You don't pressure men to do something that involves women after you have told women they better not do it. I have seen this myself, and that one of the things people don't want to admit this, but one of the things that it does do is it leads some men to be sexually confused. I don't know how many of them turn towards other men, but some of them do wind up being sexually confused. Because that's an easy way out if you're trying to deal with social pressure. But the women are under pressure to not comply. Easy way out is to just say, I'm, I'm not even into women. That's when people will fuck the shuck up and leave you alone. So anyway, I wanted to tell the ladies, you ain't owed no whole phase. Matter of fact, you're not really supposed to go through one. But if you do, you're going to deal with its consequences. What T.I. is doing, encouraging his son to get out there and dig girls out, and then taking his daughter to go and check the hymen, is um, part of the problem right there. He's not wrong because he tells her to have standards. That's not it. But one of my questions is, see, if he's doing this to her, is he looking for a husband for her? See, a Muslim father doesn't have to take his daughter to get the hymen check. We're not really supposed to do that anyway. But we are supposed to look for good men uh, as husbands for our daughters. We should be doing this. There's not a balance in what T.I. is doing. But women, you're not being honest in many cases about why you got issues with this. You take issues with this. One, some of you take issues with this because there was no man in your family to um, get this jealous behind you. But then others of you take issue with this because you simply want a whole face. And you know doggone well that even though many of your fathers did not take you to get your hymens checked, or granddads or older brothers or anything like that, you know doggone well that there was a type of man they wanted for you, and you didn't want that kind of man. When you go through a whole face, you get to F who you want to, and as we've already established, Western women only want to F the men that are no good for them in the first place. So simply put, you want to F the guys that are bad for you because they're bad for you, not because they're just more appealing. Their appeal is in them being bad for you. And you just need to admit this. You can either decide that you're going to work and get enough money to get out of your parents' house early at a younger age, or, and, and then you can do what you want, but you bear the cost, or you can decide that you're going to listen to them. And you're going to understand that even if you don't like an individual man that they want for you, you must understand that they were looking for certain things you need to look for instead of trying to get the opposite type. Your standards are jacked up. Other black men want to say just deal with the consequences of your selection and fuck the shuck up. And I want to say that too, but I'm going to tell you that your standards are jacked up. Now, what irritates men more so than your standards is you're lying about your standards, but I am going to tell you that your standards are jacked up. The octfup. What most of you want in your men is it's antisocial, to be honest. It is dysgenic, it is dysfunctional. Hence why I refer to these men as idness, intentionally dysfunctional negative stereotypes. If they weren't this way, many times you would not want them. Things that I knew not to do because they uh, meant that there was a character flaw are the same things that some of these other guys do and become more attractive to many of you. What it really comes down to is your issue with him is not necessarily how far he's going. Some of it is the double standard, but that's not completely that, that by itself either. What it comes down to is that you want your son to be like T.I.'s son. Well, actually, you don't want that. You don't want to tell your sons how to be like T.I.'s son and score at a young age. But what you want to do is you want to leave your daughters free to chase these no good niggas because that's what you wanted. And a lot of you did it. And that's what you got. Um, it's the same reason that many of you are against paternity test. It's the same reason that many of you are against prenuptial agreements. You need to just go ahead and admit that when a man is not your genetic type, 
which means he has no reason to be anything else for you anyway. That you see him as nothing but a utility, someone who, who you have to use in order to compensate for whatever he's not in the man, as a man. You gotta be honest about this. It, it's not a more reason that you're outraged by him doing this. Your reasons are not out moral, they are selfish for many of you. That's what it comes down to. Although I don't take my daughters and get this done, I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. Um, my reasons are never going to be the same as yours. My reasons are going to be uh, medical and the fact that it's not even a foolproof method. So I can wind up accusing uh, one of them when they're innocent. That's the reason. But the other thing, too, is that if we became a society that took, I'm not, I'm not going to say the Arab route or the Indian route or the Pakistani route because these are cultures and they are inferior. I'm going to say that if we took the religious route and we looked for good spouses for our sons and daughters when they were at a fairly young age, sometimes, sometimes 16, but let's say 18. Let's say 18. If we looked for them around that time, and let's say they, they, we thought that they were ready to marry at 22, but if we looked for good spouses for them while they were young, then, uh, and we socialized them to be ready for this responsibility from a younger age. In other words, if we were to raise our sons and our daughters as if they were somebody's future husband, somebody's future wife, and not just our son and just our daughter, we would find that they would be more mature at a younger age, and they would be ready to marry at a younger age. We would find this. The reason why they can't marry, when I say young, I don't mean 12 and 13, but the reason why they can't marry when they're old teens slash young adults, same ages at, at which we tend to turn a blind eye to uh, at least our sons becoming sexually active. Let's put it like that. The reason they can't marry at those ages has nothing to do with biology. It has to do with socialization. That's what it has to do with. Your early teens, I'm not advocating for that. Certainly not for the girls because they don't mature faster than men. As a matter of fact, they don't mature as fast as men, and part of that is because we don't force them to, I'm sure. That's a different topic. But we have to admit that we have not raised them as though they're going to be someone's spouse in the future. We're raising them as though they're just our children, and that's been our mistake right there. Now, that's a Western phenomenon. That's not just us. However, I want us to fix it, and I don't want white folks to fix it. You can understand why. Then you can scrap all these hymen tests and things like that. You don't, you don't have to worry about it. I hope that what I've said has been a benefit. I got to go to class now. Blackheart, sign a blackout. Assalamu alaikum.